Hello health champions! Is it really possible to burn belly fat and lose weight in 5 minutes? Well, obviously not if you do it one time, but I want to talk about today how you can use 5 minutes a few times a week to really make a difference. If you want to burn fat, then you have to spend energy. This is the traditional way of looking at things. You have to burn up calories and yes, this can help. But there is something much more important that you also need to do, which is to change your hormones. So these two methods are what we're going to talk about and how they fit together. And even though spending energy can help, changing hormones is the most important by far, especially long term. And the hormones we're talking about is we will need to lower insulin and we need to increase growth hormone. But then every time I do a video, and this one is going to be no different, there's a lot of people that comment and say, no, 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 no. All I did was I just exercised. I just burned some calories. I didn't have to change my hormones. But different people have to do different things. So this guy can use a different approach than this girl. Now, if he wants to burn some fat, then he can use some energy and that might be 80% of the reason for his success and changing hormones might be 20%. But if this girl tries the same approach, then she's going to fail. For her, using energy might contribute 10% to the weight loss and changing her hormones is probably going to be 90% of the success. And the difference is where they are on the scale, on the spectrum of metabolic health. If you have good metabolic health, you just need to do more. You just need to expend some energy. If you have poor metabolic health, now nothing's really going to happen until you change your hormones. What that also means is this guy can be much more flexible with his diet. It doesn't really matter so much what he eats as far as weight loss. Now it does matter as far as health because he needs to eat whole food. But when we talk about diet and carbs, then this person needs to be extremely strict and this one can be more flexible. And typically we hear that you want to do aerobics because that uses up a lot of calories. So if you do aerobics, you might be burning 300 calories per hour and maybe you're larger and more fit so you can use more calories. But just an example. And you do that for one hour, you burn 300 calories. Let's say you can do that six times a week. That's 1800 calories and according to the math, you would expect to lose about a half a pound a week. But if you're metabolically unhealthy and you do that, that will backfire because as you spend more energy, your body will start conserving. So the basal metabolic rate will be that you spend less. So your body will compensate for your efforts. However, if you do something called high intensity interval training, also known as HIT, now you might be spending 1200 calories per hour but only during five minutes. So then you do the math and you say, well, two days a week, that's 200 calories. So now you'll burn one ounce per week. I think I'd rather go with a half a pound per week. But that's if you're only stuck in terms of thinking about expending calories. And that's not where it's at. It's about changing the hormones so that your body will burn more fat over time. So instead of a backfire, now we get a bonus because between workouts, your body starts spending more. I'm not trying to show you exact numbers. I'm trying to give you some examples. So if you can make your hormones work for you and you can burn more between workouts, there's 168 hours per week. Now, if you can just increase your growth hormone, increase your fat burning a little bit, and burn an extra 20 calories per hour on average, that's 3,360 or about one pound per week that you would lose, even though the workout itself didn't use up a whole lot of energy. And one more thing we want to touch on is that, yes, we're all interested in weight loss. We want to burn some fat, we want to look good, but more importantly, we really want to feel good. We want to build optimum health for as long as possible. 
And in order to do that, we need to understand all the body parts and the fact that they work together. So we want to build a strong brain and we don't want to wear out our adrenals. Most people have some adrenal fatigue and that creates imbalance in their overall health picture. So the exercise you do also want to minimize cortisol because if we drive a lot of cortisol that's going to raise blood sugar which is going to raise insulin which will prevent fat burning. But more importantly if we drive too much cortisol and we weaken the adrenals further then we can't have these other things. We can't feel good, we can't have optimum health and so on. Now if we want to make the most of these five minutes we're going to put in then we want to make as much growth hormone as possible and as little cortisol as possible to really optimize fat burning and health. So if we look at the intensity here then high intensity obviously that intensity is going to be high and will make quite a bit of cortisol. Cardio is medium intensity so we will be pushing some cortisol but not as much per unit of time. However, because the intensity is so high when we're pushing the body we'll make a bunch of growth hormone when we do high intensity interval training. With the cardio the hormone benefit, the growth hormone produced is relatively small because we're not challenging the body in the moment. We're not pushing it beyond its limit. We're just sort of trudging along. And then here's the key, the duration. For HIT, it needs to be very short. I hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm doing HIT in the gym. There's this class, it goes for 45 minutes. That's not HIT, that's wearing you out. That's not what we're talking about. It needs to be short duration. Cardio, the whole premise is that you're burning calories, so you need to keep it long. And now if we add it all up, the net result of HIT is that because the duration is very, very short, just a few minutes, we make very little cortisol because it doesn't go on and on. Whereas the cardio class makes a lot of cortisol when we multiply a little bit less cortisol by a much longer time. And the growth hormone with the HIT is going to be fantastic because we're pushing the body to the limit, the body has to respond and get better, whereas the growth hormone with the cardio is relatively small. So please understand this, that this is the picture that we're looking for in order to burn fat. We want to have, make a little bit of cortisol and a lot of growth hormone. The other thing to understand here is that it's not just about the benefit between the workouts, but the fact that when we make all this cortisol, we're promoting a carbohydrate metabolism because cortisol is primarily looking to raise glucose. So we're going to mobilize glycogen, we're going to make gluconeogenesis from proteins and from other things. Whereas if we raise growth hormone and we keep the duration very short, then the growth hormone is going to burn fat between the workouts. And the reason we can make a lot of growth hormone in a very short period of time is that there's certain things that stimulate the production. If we get our heart rate up 95% or higher of our maximum heart rate, then we're pushing the body. If we do heavy weights till failure, we're really trying and we're moving and we stop and we keep trying and it won't move. If we do it to failure, we're giving the body the message that you have to get better till next time. You have to make some growth hormone. You have to change something till next time. And another way to stimulate this is fast movement, which of course goes together with bringing up a high heart rate. And what we have to understand is this is very healthy because this is what our bodies are designed for. It's a natural form of stress. Because if you ran into a tiger like this, then your body would produce a high heart rate and really fast movements. And even though it's very unpleasant to run into a tiger and have your life endangered, that is natural. That is what all species have been exposed to. That's a part of life. And the key is to understand it's very short term. It is very intense and 
If we survive this, then it helps us adapt. It helps us get better. It helps us balance things out and reprioritize things so we can get better tomorrow. And here's an example of how you might do this. You do a little bit of a warm up for a few minutes and you could do that jogging. You could be jogging in place. You could be on a bike or a stationary bike. You could be doing steps. You could walk up the steps or just step up and down on a box. You could do jump rope like this girl and you start very slow and gentle as a warm up. And in doing this, you're warming your body up. You're increasing the circulation, you're increasing the heart rate and you're taking it from whatever your resting heart rate is up to about 120, maybe 140. You're getting your body ready. And then you're ready for the high intensity portion of the workout. And whatever you were doing, like if you were jogging, now instead you can be sprinting. If you were on a bike, you can just, instead of going leisurely, you go all out. If you're doing the steps, now you start running or sprinting up the steps. And now you're trying to take your heart rate from your warm-up heart rate as close as possible to your maximum heart rate. You're really going to get best results if you get like within 95% or higher of your maximum heart rate. And obviously if you're not fit, if you're not looking like this guy, then start slower. You don't have to do all this the first week. You go to your 120, 140 and then you might raise it to 150. And then the next week you might shoot for 155 and so on, right? Use some common sense and all the whole idea is that you're doing a little bit more. You're pushing your body just a little bit more each time. And a lot of people will say that they don't have the time, they don't have the equipment, they can't go to the gym, they don't have any money for equipment. Well, you can use something as simple as running in place. You start jogging in place and then you go a little bit faster, a little bit faster until you're warmed up. Then you go really, really fast for 20 seconds and rest 20 seconds. You repeat that five times. Or you do a little bit of warm up and then you just go as fast as you can for as long as you feel like. And you just do one single set up to a really high heart rate. That still counts because you're pushing your body. And you could also do this with boxes. Now that's sort of a combination between getting your heart rate up and using a large muscle group like a workout, like calisthenics. So you could increase the intensity and do 10 jumps per side and repeat that three times with maybe a 30 second rest. That's going to get your heart rate up pretty well and it's going to stress a large muscle group. So the body will say, hey, this is really important, this muscle group, this large muscle. I have to make more growth hormone and make it bigger. If you like jumping rope, then after the warm up, you could increase the intensity and you could do 20 seconds as fast as you can, 20 seconds off, repeat five, six times, or you could do just one set, go really fast for as long as you can. If you have stairs at home and you feel comfortable running up the stairs, then you could start running up and then gradually pick up the speed and of course that's not going to last very long because the stairs aren't all that long. That might just be a few seconds but if you do that several times, maybe six or eight or ten times and you just walk down for the rest, then that's going to get your heart rate up very nicely too. And one of my favorites is to do sprints and especially sprints uphill because uphill you can't move as fast so there's less risk of injury. And now you could do 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, maybe five, six times, or you find a nice big hill once you're warmed up, you get your heart rate to about 140, and then you do a single sprint up for as long as you can keep that pace, and you're going to push your heart rate super high. Another thing you can do that works really well is to use really heavy resistance bands. This is pretty safe, you don't need a spotter, you don't have any weights that can fall on you. And now you're repeating a movement until you can't move anymore. You go to failure, to exhaustion. And this doesn't drive your heart rate quite as high as the others, but 
When you make a large muscle group work to failure, you're also making a tremendous amount of growth hormone. If you enjoyed this workout, you're gonna love that one. And if you truly wanna master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, and turn on all the notifications so you never miss a life-saving video.